Namo Adita Fa. Good morning. Thanks for joining me for our daily practice check-in. Listen, listen, listen. This beautiful sound calls us back to our true home. The first mindfulness training. Aware of the suffering caused by the destruction of life, I vow to cultivate compassion and learn ways to protect the lives of people, animals, plants, and minerals. I'm determined not to kill, not to let others kill, and not to condone any act of killing in the world, in my thinking, or in my way of life. For our Dharma lesson, we've been reading Ajahn Amaro's book, Catastrophe, Apostrophe, and we're continuing a section on friends on the path. There's a teaching of the Buddhas called the Highest Blessings, the Mangala Sutta. In the Buddha's time, the word Mangala meant a lucky charm or a protective spell, a blessing or an auspicious sign. So such things were not just seen as a spiritual blessing, but also as a means of personal protection. In this discourse, it starts with a deva coming to meet the Buddha. She asks the Buddha, what are the highest blessings, the best sources of protection? The Buddha gives a list of 38 things. Every single one of them is about what you do. There's nothing whatsoever about amulets or magical tattoos or sacred objects. It's all about the choices that we make. Number one on the list of the sources of blessings is not to associate with fools, but to associate with the wise. This is the highest blessing. That said, you might think, well, I'd love to not associate with fools, but that's my job, Ajahn, or you haven't met my family. So far in the effort to focus on practical applications of dependent origination, There's been an emphasis on the exit points from the cycles of addiction and rebirth. It's been described how three exit points relate to the first, second, and third noble truths. I would suggest that there is indeed an exit point related to the fourth noble truth. This fourth truth is a noble eightfold path. This is the medicine that brings about the cure for the spiritual malaise of dukkha. As you might expect, the Buddha gave instruction on how to work with this noble truth too. He named the task for the fourth noble truth, the path that leads to the cessation of dukkha, as it is to be developed, cultivated, brought to fruition. He also defined that path in the same discourse simply as the middle way. How then does the fourth noble truth and the means to work with it relate to exit points from the cycles of addiction and birth and death? The Noble Eightfold Path is all about our intentions and our choices. It is about how we work and act, internally and externally, the attitude of our mind, what we say and do, and who we choose to be with. If we intend to not allow ignorance to arise, as per the third exit point, then we need to see what gives ignorance its strength and to work to deprive it of that fuel. A fire will go out if there is nothing left to burn. Thus, the fourth exit point is talking about depriving ignorance of its fuel, not giving ignorance, unmindfulness, any support. It's a question of removing the fuel from the vehicles of ignorance, not providing that army with nutriment and the means to operate. May all beings be well, may all beings be happy, may all beings be at peace. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. 
Thank you for joining me today.